can connect yourself to all of those social media outlets through that hub and people can find you in different locations. So, people buy from people they know, they like, and they trust. We always go looking for a recommendation when we need to put in, you know, a new electrical system or something with our home. Um, people go online and read the reviews. Believe me, they read them, good and bad. If I'm going into the queue to buy my next pair of pants, um, I'm checking to see what all the ladies have said about that pair of pants before I go ahead and buy them. Whether it's um, real or, or a good review or a bad review, people believe and trust in reviews, especially from people that they know. So if my friend on Facebook says, I found the best pair of jeans on QVC, I'm going to go check out those jeans. Okay? This type of marketing is called rela is relationship building. Okay? So building relationships using social networking is a fantastic marketing tool. It's all about the relationships. People go into, oh, people always want a return on investment when they go on uh, a business. They, they're looking for, what am I getting back for putting money and putting time into social media? And when I mean, people ask me that, I ask them, well, you know what? What's the return on investment of your mother? Can you tell me what that is? She ran you around, she cooked for you, she washed for you. If we put a dollar value to what a mother's worth, right, it could be, pretty big. That could be a pretty big salary. She doesn't get paid that. It's just this way, as this the return that is unmeasurable. It is a relationship building tool. It is a place where you have all of the people that are interested in your product in one place. You don't have to go looking for them. They're right here. They're right here. All right, so how can we network? I mean, um, Yes, how can we network socially? There are different ways to do it. Blogging. Uh, who knows what blogging is? Does anybody read blogs? Tell me what a blog is. Melanie. Marge Hennelis' blog, or Marge Kirster's blog, is business oriented marketing and business right. and promotion. Yes. Um, I read blogs from writers. I read blogs from people who cook, organizers. Um, I read a blog, a student blog on the school day and what the school days are all about. Yeah. Anything that you want to write about. And it comes from the word web log. People would put would log their days or log their adventures on a, a vacation on the web. They would put it up on their their website. And then it just got short, you know. Oh, they'll read my web log. They'll read my web log. <laughs> so now they just go to blog. So a blog is just writing. It's just telling a story. It's informing your customers of something new or something in the works. You know, it's a way to just communicate. Okay? And you can do it through social media. Podcasting is having your own little radio station. You can have your own little talk on a radio station, on iTunes, on YouTube. You can do a video, which is the vlogging. Okay? They call that vlogging, video log instead of web log. Um, lots of people, do you, did anybody ever do a webinar online? Yes. Yep, okay. And then there's email marketing, the old-fashioned newsletter, shoot out, um, YouTube, and SlideShare. And after today, this will be up on SlideShare, so if you do have a SlideShare account, you'll be able to go find this presentation um, at <coughs> Hands Unlimited. And I'll leave my card so you can see how to find us then. But today, I just wanted to talk about blogging and the social web websites. And the, these in particular, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, LinkedIn, and Pinterest. All right, looking at this graphic, you see the blogs in the middle, okay? In my opinion, and it's not everybody's, but I think that the best way to go is to have a website or a blog and everything rotates around it. You can have everything rotate around your Facebook page if you want, but it's easier and easier for people to, to, to connect out to other things if they're on a website or a blog. And they're about the same thing, okay? If you go to WordPress, you can create a blog um, or e-blogger, you can, or you can create a blog, but on WordPress you can then expand and make it a website if you want. It doesn't have to be just a place to go and write and blog. You can make it a, an entire full-fledged website for your business. But from the blogs, you know, it's you writing a blog, getting more customers, because what? You're an expert, you're building trust, 
you're meeting people, and you take other blogs there from the bottom, share other people's blogs, okay? And then there are all the social media outlets on the top. And all of it has to be fed by really, really good content. And when you talk about good content, it means it has to give some kind of value to the reader. It has to motivate them. It has to make them want to learn more about something. It doesn't have to be specifically about your business. It could be about something that's related to your business or regulations that are stopping you from pursuing the things that you want to do. You know, it's a way to get the word out about how things are going with you and your world. All right? Here's some of the advantages of blogging. I'm just going to pop them up there. Um, when I talk about the search engine optimization, that is um, primarily one of the, it's probably one of the biggest things we do at Tin Cans Unlimited when we build a website for a company. We also then spend time analyzing the traffic to that site through Google Analytics, and we can make adjustments to keywords and all the metadata. It's all that hidden stuff that we can pop in behind a website that, that the user doesn't see. But when they go into Google and search for a certain, um, you know, typewriter or, you know, they, they're looking for something old and retro, you know, I think about people, you know, looking for, people love, always love what's old, you know. And so you go through and, and, and we put in all the right words that people might use to search for that particular um, business, okay. It builds traffic to your website. And Google loves blogs. Absolutely, Google loves blogs. Google has their tracking system set up to hit, hit anybody who's writing and talking on the web. So if you're writing about your business and your blog and you're hitting all the words that need to be hit for Google, they're going to they're gonna find your blog. And you do get feedback. And that takes me to then the disadvantages. And what is that? People are afraid to talk about or put their business out there because they're afraid that people might talk badly about them, okay? Um, but you need to do it. And I think that it's better to face a negative issue head on, politely, and the best way that you know how, than to ignore it or not let people react or respond to your blog or your Facebook page or anything like that. We encourage people to face the negative problem in a very professional and polite way and if people are going to continue to be vulgar or get ugly on your page, I say you have the right then to remove them and block that kind of person from the page. Okay? But just, you know, the regular negative stuff that comes with business, boy, you're better off hitting it and facing it head on. People appreciate that a lot more. All right, so with blogging, you do need to do quite a bit of writing, and it has to be consistent. Okay? It takes time. And the consistency is, is important. You know, if you're going to blog once a month, every month, that's fine. But if you're going to blog once every week, and you miss a week, that's not good. Okay? And I always think about my mother who told me when um, it came time to tie the church, she said, you know, sometimes it doesn't matter how much you give, it's that you give it regular every week. Because they expect it and they know they can count on whatever it is that you can give even if it's not the amount that you can afford at that time. You just have to do it regular, okay? So, also, blog posts are permanent. The SD personal remarks, we talked about that. You have disgruntled employees who might talk negatively on your, on your pages. And, and competitors could also come in and, you know, load that page up with things. But it's better to hit that stuff head on because the advantages of doing it are much greater. Bottom line, it's a great tool, but you have to have the time to tend it, or you have to have the money to outsource it. There are people, and my company included, who write blogs. Um, and I write blogs, and I ghostwrite for people that I don't even know their industry. Because, and it's just a matter of um, setting up my resource library on my, on my web page to find the information. I, I know that... Um, I forget our young lady's name. What is your name that you, you want? Alyssa. Alyssa. You talked about science and math. And I have a client who is a, uh, uh, her name is Lori Hilson, and she's a chemist, chemist in, um, at the, for the T.H. Hilson Company. And they do chemicals, they create all the chemicals that we put in paints 
that make it not smell or stink so much and make it smooth or all, you know, they had come up with all kinds of ingredients to add the paint. Um, you know, and she's, you know, it's amazing because you don't think of women going into that field. But I just go online and I find Facebook pages of all about science and women, and there are more than you can imagine if you just went in and searched in Facebook for all, all the pages there are regarding science and women. And then we promote that and we write about that in our blog and we try and help young girls get involved in math and science because it's not just a boy thing. So what is Facebook? All right, these are the stats. I'm not going to read them all because I'm going to have this up on SlideShare. You can go back and you can read what you can for now, but you'll be able to see this on SlideShare. <coughs> um, but the average Facebook user spends 20 minutes on the site per visit, so I'm obviously not the average Facebook user. Okay, I spend quite a bit of my day on Facebook. Um, and I have to say, it's not all for work. I do spend a lot of time just having fun on Facebook and talking with friends. Um, this is what my Facebook page looks like. They call it a timeline. And they give you this nice place to put a nice picture across the top, and then you get a profile picture or um, your logo. If this is your business page, you're going to want to put your logo in where you see my face instead. And the cover photo is the large one on the top. That should be changed out periodically, highlighting something about your business, okay? Showing something new. Does anybody know that movie? Who are the actors? Anybody know those actors? Brooks. Yeah. Anybody know that? Mm-hmm. Jennifer Rogers. Yeah. 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 Singing it right. No. Yeah. It's soon the time of year to watch it. Oh, White Christmas. It's close. Yeah. It's not White Christmas. Anybody oh, ever see Holiday? Holiday. Yeah. Oh, man. Oh. Yep, it's my favorite movie of all time. I absolutely love movie. that movie. <laughs> and, it's, and I put that up there because I'm getting antsy to watch it. Yeah. It's, it's a little early. But I convinced myself it's okay because it really covers all the holidays in the year. So you can watch it. Anyway. Okay. <laughs> You'll see then the pictures below. I have, they have um, friends, photos, Pinterest. Those are all apps, applications they call. They call them apps for short. And what I do is um, I, I can connect, you see how I can connect out to Pinterest from Facebook. So if I click on, and I can't do that because I'm really not on the website, this is just a screenshot of my Facebook page, but I could click here and people could see at a glance the kinds of things that I'm posting on Pinterest. And if I click here on Tumblr, that'll take them straight to my website, straight to my website where I, you can see my latest blog, okay? I have a personal website, and I also have a website through Tin, or I, we have the Tin Cans website where we post every staff member's blog. All right, and what I do for business is like today, and I'll have I'll have you also take a picture for me with my camera when you're ready. Okay. See, I'm gonna just give her my camera. So when I go back to the office, that's gonna go up on Facebook. Thank you. This is our Tin Cans website. We have a cover photo of our, we moved a month ago, so we are now in next to GF Bowman on 422 in that office building. Um, so we have our name and lights, and we get to have us, yes, Twitter. And what's Twitter? There's some statistics, you know, I can go through all of these, but basically it's a place where you do a quick snippet of information. If I were going to Twitter from here today, I have to do it 140 characters or less. So I'm saying stuff like today, uh, Rotary Breakfast meeting, great time had presenting about social media. Send it out. Okay, so why do that? You know, people wanna, people think, you know, is anybody going to see that? You know, this Twitter feed that comes flying around. Well, I got to tell you, there's people that just sit there and Twitter all day. And all they see are Twitter feeds that come by. And I have to tell you, I'm not a big Twitter person. I do Twitter for business, and I do it... Only, I, my only connections on Twitter are business related. I'm just overwhelmed with information. There is this information overload that is, is, is a real thing. All right. Um, there's 55 million tweets per day. You know, it's like right now, in one second, there's 640 tweets going out across the world. It's just amazing to me. But anyway. All right. And sometimes that are better to tweet than others. Um, and this is my Twitter page. And that's what it looks like. And you can see 
the feeds that come down. Now this is just my page, so it's only showing the tweets that went out. Okay? All right. Then we get to YouTube. More stats for you. But I thought the most interesting one was the very bottom one. The first video uploaded to YouTube was 19 seconds long. And today we can put full-length movies and full-length TV episodes. And people watch their episodes and their favorite TV shows via YouTube. Okay? And that's my YouTube page. So what, what am I interested in? If I, you can see the kinds of things. Um, Yuria and Ricardo Sama. I'm taking ballroom dancing lessons. It's on my bucket list and I said I'm doing it and I'm loving it. So now I go and I YouTube all the dances. <laughs> and I'll stand at the YouTube and I'll do the, you know, try and do the steps and practice through a YouTube video. And LinkedIn, again, more stats, but LinkedIn is the place I go to uh, meet up with colleagues if I'm looking for um, outside vendors, somebody to do maybe a, a graphic design for me. It's a place to go for employment if you're looking for employment or you're looking to hire people. It's a great place to link up with those kinds of people. Again, I use each of the social media outlets for specific purposes. I told you about Twitter and that, that's my outlet for gathering information on my industry. LinkedIn is where I go to talk to other colleagues to find out if somebody can help me design a website. As project coordinator at Tin Cans, I have to always be ready to find anybody who can put together a website or create a newsletter, any kind of graphic or writing, okay, or blog write for me. Number one of all is the newest one, and that's Pinterest. There are your statistics on Pinterest. And what do you do? You pin everything. Pin all things. What does that mean? If you look at the graphic, that really is a good representation of what Pinterest is, okay? You know, when I was a little girl growing up in my bedroom, I had a bulletin board and all, what did I pin? I mean, a picture of the cutest boy, and my favorite crafting thing to do, and my latest blue ribbon I won at the fair, you know, something like that. Pinterest is a place where you can go and do that. And you can create any kind of board. And it started out as just a pleasure thing, people and women mostly sharing recipes, and crafting ideas and decorating ideas, but it's evolving and it's becoming a great tool for businesses. And let me show you why. This is a typical Pinterest page. If you go to mine, you'll see that each of the labels, minted, gather around the table, infographics, storefronts, these are all boards, pin boards. And within each of those, I pin to that category. So, for instance, now for fun, I just created a minted board because I love anything that's peppermint, whether it's food, and I love anything that's a mint color, or in clothing and nail polish and all that kind of thing. It's just a way of grouping things together, okay? If you look at Gather Around the Table, that was actually a, a contest done by Bon Appetit magazine giving away a free prize, but it got people to their website, got people looking at their articles and their recipes. But what did we do? They wanted you to create your, your, your dream dinner party. So I would go through and pin the music that I was going to play. Um, that's the Mad Men music. I was going to get my CD out. And the little picture underneath of the fire that, you know, is going to be an outdoor party. And we were going to sit around the fire. And I was going to put a movie screen out, you see on the top and have the, the neighbor kids over, everybody can sit out and, and have a good time, okay? So talk about getting the customer from awareness to purchase. So what do you do now? Create your website or blog and you let these things revolve around, okay? Let these things, and they don't have to be a lot every day, they just have to be regular. Thank you very much and I'm open.